for Freddy Spencer. Yes. Freddy Spencer was Freddy. Uh, we do it in English. So yes. It's better for you. Or it Italian. is. You will speak Italian. I don't speak. No, I, it's better. It's better as that it's English. You don't. You don't. You don't want to hear my Italian. <laughs> you might not understand it. So. He likes cappuccino. Yeah. He's having a cappuccino. Cappuccino. Okay. Thank he's you. vegetarian. He's vegan. Vegetarian now. He's trying three years. Yeah. We, we were starting about talking about training. Yes. Which is a thing that probably many people don't don't match with your career. Now you are old school rider. Yes. They say they didn't train, they smoke, they drink. Some of them did. Yes, some yeah. Some others didn't. Right, right. But uh, you know But it was that era where you would see see that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even before me where you would hear my guys that would be in the bar till two or three not not at really in my era, but just before it stuff they in the bar have to with, with tobacco sponsor it was perfect to see a yeah, rider yeah. with very very sheen had a hole in the front of his helmet because he was smoking <laughs> cigarettes okay but what about what about you what about now you you were telling me that you are in, in a perfect shape with you know because you, the technique yeah. yes. masters all you, you would say to me but what about your 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 career your your times your Training, training well, day or, or yeah. lazy and riding, lazy and riding. Yeah, it was in my. I was in that transition era where from the late 70s into the early 80s. The early 80s, and when, when Honda got involved in 1982 with HRC, the first year of HRC, I was, I was on the team. It was the beginning of the really increasing grip and power and chassis rigidity. Now, what that what that did was is that that put a lot more effort on the rider to ride that bike to not it not so much as potential for a lap, but over a race distance. And you can see, I know it myself. I, I really started, you know, I, I get tired in testing, or maybe I wouldn't before, you know, you, you, because but what I'm saying is is that. In, in those early 80s, we were increasing our lap times from year to year, from 82 to 83, 84, by sometimes three seconds a year. So, you know, if you look at the speed difference, my point is the necessity facilitated and pushed along our, our need to really start focusing on diet, performance, recovery, strength, Agility, all these things, which was unknown, before we, which was before would kind of come through the riding. Now, you combine that with I was a natural trainer on dirt bikes, so I was automatically in better shape than most because I had my yard, I had some property, and I rode all the time. So I did it to keep sharp with the movement, and and you know because I came from dirt tracking where the effort level. Was always a, uh, something that was important. Right now, you know, riders are doing a lot of things. Yes. Down on the bike, outside the bike. So, not your, not your case. Yeah. Uh, you didn't, you didn't train in CrossFit, weightlifting, no. no. blood pressure testing, blood yeah. testing, pre testing. We didn't even think about that. Training, yeah, we, we, didn't, we didn't even think about that. We, we, we barely understood. It was just the beginning in 1985, the year I did the two championships. The only book I could find that had anything to help me with training. And, and I remember it because it was, it was called Eat to Win. E-I-T to win. Eat to Win by Dr. Robert Haas. And it was a book that, that I, I found by accident, actually, because there was no internet then or anything. Um, I, was, I, was in a, I was in a bookstore, and, and I was starting to get ready for the 85 season, thinking about how I was going to train. I hadn't even gone to winter testing yet and realized how difficult it was going to be until I got there and rode nine days, bikes back to back. And after that nine days, I realized I've really got to get in for the shame, you know? And so I've been down and I worked over the next two months until Daytona every day. And I had this book called Eat Twin, and it was about carbohydrate and protein, a little bit about um, how, to, how to eat and not have muscle weakness, recovery, which was right up what I needed because getting off of one bike to the other back to back every single day, two practice or four practice sessions a day, and then you know obviously race back to back on Sunday. So um, at the end of your career, you had some issues. Like yeah, I did. I did. Uh, probably is the thing you, you wouldn't you wouldn't face 
right now is you're waiting for a race in an hour. It, 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 because you're exactly right. Is that a lot of my damage happened way before 85. It was a cumulative. When they went in and, and, and did the surgery, and, and they didn't even really know what carpal tunnel was then. That's why I'm not scar so big. It was almost exploratory. They went in, they didn't know. The nerve was, was overdeveloped like 10 times. They, they were talking about sentimental issues, uh, some ego, ego problems. He said that you had a, a wrist problem. You know? Oh, the, yeah. The press was oh, really yeah. crazy to understand I know. what I, 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 know. I know, it was crazy. And you were a, 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 a forerunner of one that they're talking about. Now, when a rider doesn't win anymore, ah, mental issues. Sentimental problems. Yeah. Is that probably easy? It's nothing about the physics. Well, it, 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 the thing is, by the time I had the problem, you got to realize I've been racing 19 years. And, and I started so young. And, and if you understand fitness as you do, and things we're talking about, you know, when I was young, I rode bikes twice as big as me. So I put so much strain on, on my, my body. And, and the thing is, I rode constantly. I rode four hours a day, every day in my yard, every day for 10 years, every day, 10 years, from the time I was four years old to I was 15, and every day, four or five hours a day, and, you know, it just wore my body out in one sense, and then also... Without preserving it somehow. Yes. Well, we didn't, you know, and, and the thing is, that's where now you, you catch things, as you know, catching something earlier. I, I've been having the problem before really chronic and, and something that really we couldn't fix for a long time, but you just ignore it, you know, you just feel like, oh, it'll go away, or, or you work around it, because no one had had it, but now if, if a person has that problem, or, you know, they know it, it's either in the forearm, or it could be, it's, it's a, where mine was coming from an injury, really in my neck, that was weakening my arm, yes. and over, and I strained everything, and damaged my tendons, and, and over the nerve to where I couldn't my hand even sometimes say I get in a certain position go sleep. So for yeah. for an old school rider point of view, one of the very few, very few positive things of these days is attention to fitness. Oh fitness absolutely and sure. Just one of the few. Yeah, yeah, few. yeah well yeah but because you were telling me that uh, that you are you are in a good shape, very good shape now, more now than when when you were into racing. Yeah, I, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm heavier, you know, I'm not, not as thin, but that's just, you know, but that's out of, out of I, don't, I don't work so hard on that. But you're right, I can ride all day. I, I do classic events. I, I was explaining about where I did uh, the Honda press launch in Portugal a year ago, January, and I was there with riders half my age and some, some of you know, some, some guys that race in uh, You can't say it, I can't say it. You kick some asses. Well, yeah, but, but, but the, the, the cool part was is that, you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're exhausted, they're going, you know, I go, no, I can ride another hour and stuff. They go, I want to, I said, when you grow up, uh, we have a saying, old boy, young boy, experience, wisdom, understanding. And, and yeah. I think you were saying to me that, and because the interview saw you, because yeah. you have yeah. so many things. No, no problem. Te techniques conquers all. Oh, absolutely. Techniques, effort, humility. Right, humility and, and wisdom about exactly how your body works, which we were talking about, um, and because he was the same thing. He was talking about how much when he was younger, if, if he knew the things then, and and, and you know, late. yeah. Well, it's never too late. It's never too late. Just enjoy it in a different way. But I want to say this, if we're in, is that motorcycling has given me so much an opportunity to hone my skills and what I can do. It taught me. Belief in my own judgment and belief in dreaming and dreaming and, and an incredible opportunity to travel the world and meet some incredible people and share incredible moments together. And, and for that, I'm very thankful. Thank you very much.